Beautiful. There we go. Yeah, uh, I'm in Winter Park, Colorado. Um, we're by the Winter Park ski area here. This is kind of our, we li I live in different places. You can ask me that on in the interview if you'd like. It's part of, I, li I believe a lot of sales is lifestyle. Cool. That's, that's pretty awesome. I love Colorado. Oh, it's beautiful here. I went skiing yesterday and it was, you know, beautiful powder and uh, the sun was that Colorado blue sky. It, it was, it was just gorgeous. That's awesome. Yeah. I'm uh, coming out there for a conference in, well, at the beginning of February in a couple of weeks. Uh, and I've only, I'm going to Denver and. Oh yeah. We're an hour and a half from Denver. Oh, okay, cool. I'm a, I was a big fan. Oh yeah. It's, it's beautiful here. We live all, and I'm leaving tomorrow actually for uh, San Diego. Oh, cool. Is, do you have like a second home there or just a business? Yeah. I, we live in, you know, you might ask that on the interview too, if you want. Uh, uh, I, you know, I don't take vacations. I live them. <laughs> uh, we have homes in different parts of the country because I originally got started in real estate. So I always, instead of taking uh, overpriced, expensive, tiring, stressful va uh, vacations, I just bought homes in different places. And all I got to do is, you know, pick up the uh, iPhone and the iPad and the laptop and turn on the Wi-Fi in the other house. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah, sales is a million dollar skill. Um, absolutely. Speaking of that, let me get my book and everything and uh, I'm ready whenever you are. Where's your where's your podcast by the way? Um, I had trouble finding it. Uh we are not up yet. It's we're we're brand spanking new. Uh oh, planning okay. to have it up in the middle of uh February. Oh, okay. So am I your first interview? You are number four. Oh, okay. So you're only a semi-virgin. <laughs> well, you know, that, that first one was really the tough one, you know. So are you, a, are you a, um, uh, is this your own thing or is this something you do with another company or something like that? I don't, uh, know, well, this, I don't know much about you. Sure. Uh, I can tell you a little bit about me. Uh, this is something I started. I am a salesman. I'm a sales engineer. Uh, I... And all, I also invest in real estate and uh, I sell capital equipment to food and pharmaceutical manufacturers. Uh, and I'm fairly newish to outside sales, as you'd say. Uh, and I started this for two reasons to improve my sales skills because they have room for improvement and to uh, as kind of a thought leadership platform because uh, my real estate investing mentor recommends we, all of his uh, students uh, run their own platform. So I- Who's your mentor? Uh, Joe Fairless. Joe Fairless, I don't know. I, I've heard the name. I think I've heard the name. Where is he out he, of? Uh, he's out of Cincinnati. He hosts the um, Best Real Estate Investing Advice Ever podcast. Uh, the longest running daily real estate podcast on iTunes. Got to make sure I get that. Uh, that right but uh, right. if you check it out and, and you want an introduction definitely let me know he's always happy to uh speak with new people he's a very friendly guy introduction what do you mean i'm so oh to introduce this to him I've, um wait a second um to you, I mean. joe fairless i did an he interviewed me i'm on his podcast oh, really yeah yeah now it just clicked in he interviewed me oh i don't know two years ago or something like that yeah he's uh a daily podcast, you end up needing a lot of guests. I, I, so, I forget, you know, I do so many of these interviews. I do yeah. uh, Jamie Tardy. Um, um, I, I've done, I, I can't even tell you all, all the different um, uh, people. Joshua Smith, uh, GSD, um, uh, all kinds. I do them all the time because it's just good marketing for my business. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It's. I think it's the new crap. I should have turned off my phone. I'm going to turn off my phone right now. Uh, I think it's a, like a new way of doing business, honestly. I mean, I've been doing it for years, actually. It's just, it's, uh, I do videos. If you want to ask me about marketing, I'm very big on social media marketing too. Um, yeah, write that down. Uh, you know, I think uh, videos, podcasts, live streaming, I do it all. Uh, I do stuff every week. I, um, got almost 700 videos on YouTube. I have thousands of followers on YouTube. Um, wow. it, it just makes my business grow. I mean, I get 
I don't have to spend any money on my sounds like we're doing the interview already without the intro. Yeah. <laughs> why don't we, uh, why don't we, uh, not knock all this good stuff out before we start start recording. So Go uh, for it. you're on hit record here on my yeah. end. These are my two books, by the way, if you need them for the intro. The mentor, how to sell with guts, how to sell with guts and the gut sales method. The mentor teaches the gut sales method. I saw a lot of those on Amazon and eBay and from my directs from my webpage. Cool. Well, I'm going to uh, go through the bio that yeah. you provide me and uh, we can get going through there. Sounds All good. Right. All right. So our guest today is Claude Diamond. Uh, Claude Diamond is called The Mentor. He believes that sales is the million dollar skill. He's the highest paid gut sales trainer in the world. He teaches his principles of success one-on-one -on -one only. Guts is designed to make sales f more fun and profitable. You'll learn how to convert cold calls to warm calls in 15 seconds and how to get past any guardian at the gate, all without the need for scripts or begging, without asking for the order, and without premature presentations. He's authored quite a few books, including uh, The Mentor Teaches Success, the mentor teaches the guts sales method, how to sell with guts manual, the guts 2018 update, the rules of guts, and the list honestly goes on and on. You got it. <laughs> A cast of thousands. <laughs> he has students in 18 different countries, and, and we're happy to have him here today. So, uh, Claude, welcome to the show. Taylor, thank you for inviting me. Um, um, it's my honor. So, uh, can you tell us a, a little bit about your background? I know you did some, you've done some real estate, you've been a sales trainer. Uh, give, us, give us a little bit of your story. Um, I'm a kid from New York City. I was born and raised in Manhattan. Uh, that's why I talk like this once in a while. It gets worse after a glass of wine. Um, <laughs> my parents wanted to improve my elocution, so we moved to New Jersey. Um, that helps, right? you know, yeah. And, um, I did what most, um, I had a big advantage in life. I was raised by two, um, immigrant parents. Uh, you know, they're tough on their kids because they didn't have a lot. Uh, so they were pretty tough. They were unspoiled people. Um, and they were very grateful to live in this wonderful country. Anyway, uh, I did what most kids do, uh, from those kind of parents. Uh, I went to college, get a good job, get a good education. Um, I went a business degree, law degree, and I had a job. I wanted to make the world a better place, so I took a job with Swift Premium selling hot dogs in the South Bronx. <laughs> <laughs> Just found out a good company, and you know, I had the suit and the tie and the, the company car. I wasn't very happy sitting in my car spilling coffee between my legs all day long. Uh, I said, "Is this my life?" You know, I was in my twenties, early twenties, and. Um, uh, I just wanted more, and I got that real estate fever thing. I read all the books, uh, you know, um, Robert Allen and all those good books. And um, then um, I um, wanted to, um, I, I don't know, I just I wasn't, I had enough knowledge to be dangerous. And I did one really smart thing in my life. I, all my books reflect uh, my mentor, Max. I tell everybody on every podcast or interview I ever do, find a mentor, Find somebody who is accountable, not just taking your money and handing you off to somebody with a lot of busy work or a virtual assistant. I mean a true one-on-one -on -one accountable mentor, someone who's successful financially in their own right, okay? They're, they're, they're living the life um, that you wanna emulate. And I was lucky, I met a man in New Jersey, his name was Max. He taught me how to do real estate. He was the greatest salesman I've ever met. He made more money in one phone call than I would make in a whole year in my corporate job. Wow. And after all the seminars and gurus and everything, I said, this is the, this is the guy I'm gonna learn from, and I did. And my life literally changed overnight when I learned the power, the skills, the art and science of persuasion from this man. He, it takes a millionaire to make a millionaire. Uh, you wanna work with somebody who's honest, somebody who's accountable, um, and someone who's doing the walk, you know, not just, you know, someone who's truly can sh shortcut, the shortcut to success is the way I put it. Mm. And what and, kind of business in real estate was he teaching you to do? Um, he taught me lease purchasing, uh, how to control real estate with an option and a lease. Taught me many other strategies. I call it arbitrage real estate, getting real estate under contracts and selling those contracts, creating notes, passive income. He told me how to consult in real estate. 
Consulting is something a lot of people don't do. The real thing he gave me that I did not have, because I was a shy person. I, I was the kid, you know, my, nobody ever believes me except my wife. She knew me you when I was so kid. shy. I, I, you know, um, <laughs> my, my hero in life, I do this in every podcast, is, um, is this young man. Popeye. <laughs> Popeye. Popeye said one really great thing. Uh, you can trust the guy who eats spinach and his girlfriend was, a, I think his girlfriend was a vegan or at least an anorexic uh, olive oil. <laughs> uh, you, you know, the thing he said, I am what I am. That's all what I am. We can be ourselves. We don't have to be anybody else. I didn't have to be Max or Anthony Robbins or any. I just had to be Claude. Taylor can be Taylor. And I found out that um, he helped me to build up my confidence uh, how to be a better communicator, how to listen better. And he taught me sales like no one else did. Um, and he literally, uh, I became, my life changed at that moment when I had this mentor who taught me the art and science of persuasion. I call it my gut sales method. I, I mentor people all over the world in this very simple three-step method on how to qualify people, how to have good adult-to-adult -adult conversations, how to have fun and make a, can I use bad language on your podcast? There's this family show. We'll bleep it out. Well, you know, he taught me how to make a shitload of money <laughs> um, by giving good value to people, uh, by solving their problems, taught me how to work smarter. Uh, the one thing I learned, you know, the question I ask is, why are some people, why are some people so wealthy? I call them one percenters. Why are the greatest salespeople in the world? Every company has the top people, a few top people, one percent. How come they make all the money and the other 99 percent are always struggling or complaining or looking for the new thing? Uh, why is that? Why are those one percenters succeed so that they're happy? They make a lot of money. They're always the top in their field. Why is that? Sales. It's their sales skills. Yeah. It's the, the art and science of sales, persuasion, and influence. I call it guts. Great, unorthodox, untraditional techniques of sales and success. They know, they don't give, pre see, a gut sales system is about not giving presentations, not begging, not using scripts, okay? Um, not, um, uh, not, not, uh, not sounding like any other salesperson you ever met. Uh, most people, when they get on the phone with a salesperson or they go to a car dealership or insurance or a real estate office, they know in the first three to five seconds that they're dealing with a salesperson. And right away, the defensive walls go up and they start, uh-oh, it's a salesperson. They want my money. They want something from me. And, and Max didn't do that. Max, Max really taught me how to master the art and science of conversation, of asking questions, of persuading and influencing people so that they want to buy, not that, they're just, not that you're just trying to overwhelm them and trap them or intimidate them with tricky questions and things like that. He, he really, he didn't know how to explain it. And that's kind of was my job. I, I've done a lot of research on in different so areas of psychological studies. Uh, Dr. Eric Byrne, transactional analysis, Dr. Robert Cialdini, um, the psychology of persuasion, a lot of different people. And, uh, and, and this is why some people succeed. Some people are what we call natural salespeople. And some people like myself have to, had to learn this and practice it so much Absolutely. that we internalized it. I count myself in that have to learn it category, not the, not the uh, natural one, but I does certainly know some natural salespeople. Yeah. And something, something you said uh, that I really picked up on that I've heard before from probably one of the best salespeople that I've, had a for great fortune of knowing personally a former uh, for former manager of mine. Uh, what he told me was, you don't want to sell someone something. You want them to buy something. You need to get them to buy. You don't want to go out and sell. So I think that's a very, very uh, important mindset to have. I think Tommy Hopkins said, you know, uh, uh, don't make, uh, don't make, pe don't sell people, make them want to buy. Mm, um, yeah. You know, he's one of the good, sale, really good sales trainers out there because um, I've read them all. I've got a whole library of books and I, I, I see a lot of the sales techniques out there. Very, they're kind of old fashioned. They haven't evolved 
you know, we're in the 21st century here and we're just still, people are still training to do the dog and, uh, as they say, the dog and pony show, features and benefits, ask for the order five times. I think people are a little bit more sophisticated today and they don't want, uh, what I, uh, the analogy I use is the doctor's office. I say this all the time. You go, Taylor, you go to your doctor, something's bothering you. What is, what, what does your doctor say when you walk in the office? So tell me what's bothering you. Well, Taylor, what's bothering you? Taylor, what's bothering you? And you would say, my neck, my back, my something, my, I, I'm getting headaches. I can't sleep at night. My wife doesn't understand me. Something like that. Okay. And the, do you mind, and the doctor's going to ask you a line of questioning. Do you mind that doctor asking and poking and doing the examination? No, go for it. Why? Why don't you mind that? Very personal. Because I'm... I'm there to get his help. I, I need it. And I, I know I want his help. And part of that is answering his questions. Exactly. You come to the doctor with a problem or the dentist or the accountant or the lawyer or any other professional. Why? And here's, here's the epiphany, the revelation. Why don't we do the same thing in sales? Whether you're uh, real estate, car sales, life insurance, network marketing. Why, why are we telling why don't we ask the prospect, what's the problem? Why are we talking today? What would you like to see happen in the next 30 days, three months? Um, what is the biggest challenge in your life? I, ask, I teach people to learn how to ask questions with things that we call stroking and nurturing and empathy. So make, I want to make people feel comfortable. I'm trying to create a familiar and trusting and likable uh, environment. And we do this with guts. And, and we teach people how to get that, you know, do you ever go to a party or somebody and do, do you meet somebody and you had that instant uh, chemistry or you just, they were easy, they were easy to talk to and you had fun? Absolutely. It happens, you know, with a reasonable amount of frequency. That's yeah. Sure. And then there's some people, it's like listening to crickets. Okay. <laughs> you, you know, they say, yes, no. Uh -huh. I don't want to be here. You, you know, I don't want to be. Here. Yeah. And there's a science of psychology, of persuasion and influence, learning how to ask the right questions to get the information we need to determine, is this a prospect or a waste of time? Is this someone who has a problem? Is, can our product or service solve that problem? Does this person have the money to pay us? Because obviously the number one rule, why are we in business, Taylor? To get paid. Today, baby, today. <laughs> I'm in business to make money today. Here's something I also say, it's very controversial. Um, uh, I say the salesman comes first. Um, uh, guts is very controversial. No, uh, no scripts, no asking for the order, no begging, no presentations, and the salesperson comes first, which is 180 degrees difference from my good friend Zig Ziglar and a lot of other people. I think most people who get into business are hardworking, decent people. Maybe I'm a, maybe I have rose-colored glasses on or something. But I think I most, think I agree with you. I think most people are decent, hardworking. They 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 don't want a Lamborghini in the garage. They just want to put food on their table and pay their cable bill. They can speak okay. for themselves. I want the Lambo. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I, but I, I know what you mean. I, I lease a Cadillac. I, I lease a Cadillac XT5, which I I love that car. Um, there you go. But. <laughs> but the thing about it is, what's wrong with the salesperson being confident? having the skill set, um, having a system, a methodology like God's three steps, so that they are, um, they, they just come across uh, as a confident, doctorly, caring, empathetic person. And they get the qualification out of the way. Where's the needs and greeds or, the, or the, the motivation? Do they have the money to pay for the product or service? Do they have the authority to make a decision? Do they have a character to keep that decision? And is it in a timely manner? These are the things that we need. And that's our second step in the guts. We call it um, the qualification step. The guts is a three-step staircase. Very simple. If you can memorize these three steps, you can learn my system. All right, everybody get a pen and a piece of paper out. There right you go. Down. It's real simple, guys. Agenda, qualification, close. Three simple steps. The agenda, and this is all based on the psychology of the persuasion of the guts method. Um, the agenda is basically not giving the presentation or reading a script. Hello, Mr. and Mrs. <laughs> you know, I might go, um, Taylor, uh, can I give a quick example, Taylor? I know time is short. Um, real quick, um, uh, Taylor, um, well, why are we talking today? What would you like to see happen from our conversation? 
Well, I'd like for us to share some information uh, and some lessons that you've learned along the way with our listeners. And selfishly, I'd like to learn some of those myself today. Thank you. You know, I don't think it's selfish and I really appreciate your time and, 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 uh, and interviewing me here. You mind if I ask you a few questions and then you ask me a few. And at the end of this conversation, would you do me one favor? If, if, I hope we do business, but if not, could you fire me? Would you do that for me? <laughs> fire fire you if we're not going to do business or just fire not. you outright yeah I, you know i don't i i'm uh, i respect my my prospects my clients uh, or prospective clients so much i don't we don't have to have we can have an honest dialogue you don't have to say you'll think about it you'll talk to your spouse uh you'll uh, check your finances you'll call me in three days you don't have to say any of that you say claude you're fired i like you but your product is not what i'm looking for <laughs> just just let's have an honest dialogue is that okay with you Sure. Yeah, I'll fire you at the end if. Uh, thank if it comes you. Down thank there. you. It sounds a little like our president's game show at one time. <laughs> yeah, uh, a little bit. Exactly. That's called an agenda. An agenda is basically setting a premise for a trust dialogue, a likable trust dialogue. Can I ask you questions? You ask me questions, and then you fire me. It's a roadmap. Uh, before you take a trip, you might go in your GPS and find out where you're supposed to go. I do the same thing. Um, basically, like. Um, you know, when you go to the dentist and they say, see this long needle, it, I'm going to put it in, I'm going to swab your cheek first, then put this gigantic needle in your mouth and it'll hurt for a second, but then I can do all that ugly drilling and stuff and you won't feel any pain. See, I'm telling you ahead what's going to happen. So there's no surprises. I'm throwing you off balance, by the way. This is also called in psychological terms a pattern interrupt. We call it a guts move. I'm just telling you, I'm being as transparent and honest as I can be up front. And that kind of throws people off balance. So that's the agenda. The next step is the qualification. I'm gonna learn how to ask you questions. Now, this is the nuclear powered engine, spaceship engine. Uh, you've gotta learn how to ask questions uh, with what we call positive and negative redirection, with stroking, nurturing, empathy. My job is to have, uh, to qualify you up front. Uh, for instance, if you don't have the money, and when should we talk about money? Uh, uh, when do most salespeople talk about money, Taylor? All the way at the end. We talk about it in the money. Taylor, if you found a solution to your problem in real estate or whatever, uh, uh, do, you, uh, do you have the, uh, sufficient money to, to pay for it if, it if it solves your problem and it looks like it's a, it's a reasonable purchase? I do. Thank you for that. And the source of that money, by the way, credit card, you're hidden in your mattress, you're going to borrow it from Uncle Harry, who you haven't spoken to in 20 years. Uh, um, I mean, where, what's the source of that funds? If you I know. called Uncle Harry yesterday uh, for the first time in 20 years, and uh, he's good to go. Okay. <laughs> well, we got the money out of the way. Then we qualify you. Is it the time frame? Do you want to solve this problem immediately? 30 days, six months, a year from now? Because time is important, too. Um, it, you, do you have the money for the, to solve the, to, will my product or service solve it? Do you have that motivation on a one through 10? We call it the Claude barometer. Are you an, are you a five and I got to bring you up to a 10 or are you a three or four and I'll never m move you. Do you have the money to pay for it? Do you have the authority to make the decision today? I'm all about today, by the way. Hmm. I like, I like today decisions. Okay. Um, I get paid to, to train companies and people and individuals, and, I'll, and I, I'll tell them, you know, there is no tomorrow in sales. There's only today. You want to go to the bank today, and you've got to work on your sales skills, and let's get started, or you can fire me. Very direct, very honest. So we qualify them, all the different steps, and then we review, and we go to what we call the commitment close, the third step in the staircase where we, I just review everything. Trent, you told me you have the money, you have the need, you need to do this right away. You're the authority figure, and I know you're a gentleman and a man of your word. What should we do next? And you hopefully will say yes or have some questions, which I will fix, and now we close. But I don't beg for the order. I make you make, I let you make the decision. And you can say, Claude, this sounds good. This is what I wanted. This is the dialogue uh, that I've never had with a with a person in that in this area before. Let's go. Let's let's move forward. How do I pay for it? Magic words that all sales people love. And How do I pay for it? And, and that, in a very short, uh, brief thing, is the gut sales method. I what I do with my clients is we practice, we role play, we make live calls. I see sales as the million dollar skill. Most of us take it for granted. We read a book. We, we think it's all about um, features and benefits. It's not. It's about making that person 
say that? What do you want people to say about Taylor Lott when you get off the phone with them? Wow, that was a great call. I can't wait for him to solve my problem uh, in my particular business. Uh, meeting with the person face to face is usually a component. So I can't wait to see him and, you know, next week or later this week would be also great. That's good stuff. What else would you like to say about your personality as you as a man? Um, that I'm good to my word. I'm pleasant, uh, you know, uh, good to talk to. I, I make their day better. That's something I've been thinking about a lot uh, recently, making a lot of cold calls is um, always being responsive to the other person, but being pleasant to talk to and, you know, smiling and, and having a good tone yeah. and being good to generally hear from. Yeah. They, you want, when they get off the phone, you want them to say, you know, that Taylor, I like him. Yeah. Number one psychological trigger okay. why prospects buy is likability. Okay. What do people say? Remember Norm from Cheers? Remember this show, <laughs> Norm, Norm would yeah. walk on the bar, this big happy guy and everything. Everybody go, Norm! You know, they loved Norm. He was a happy-go-lucky guy who came in the bar every day and drank beer. Um, they, you know, he told jokes and stuff like that. You want them to say, I like Taylor. I trust Taylor. Trust. Once you have trust, it's a blank check. The thing about sales is we take it for granted. It's a skill. It's an art form. Um, it's the science of persuasion and influence, but you also have to be a thespian, a little bit, a good actor to control the environment, to gain that likability and trust from the person. And, and this comes through practice. And what I do with my students, we do these little half hour meetings. We do group meetings and half hour meetings. And we just, we role play. Role play is the, it's what I do with all my students. It makes a half hour go very fast. And I say, give me, your, give me the junk that they're giving you, the problems, you're, the stalls, the objections. How do we convert cold calls into warm calls instantly? How do we get past the guardians at the gate? How do we have, and I, use, I think I'm the only person who uses this word, how do we have fun in sales? I way. like fun. It, it helps everything uh, go a lot better for everybody. It makes you a lot more likable. Uh, when you're having fun, the other person starts having fun themselves. Yeah, when people laugh or they see the value or they like you as a person, and that leads to trust. Say, and you go to the bank every day. If you're selling a good product that you're enthusiastic about, that you're passionate about, you go to the bank all the time. You're free. Freedom is my one of my favorite words because... I didn't want to work for other people. I, I'm just a lousy, I'm a horrible employee. Um, I, 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 I like to sail my own ship. I want to be my own person. I don't want to sit in traffic. I, um, I, I don't know what it is. It's, I just realized at a young age what I, what I want to do. And it wasn't work for other people. I wanted to, I love working from home. I work, I live in California, Colorado, Hawaii, North Carolina. I have houses everywhere thanks to this wonderful business and I'm free. Wow, that's that's awesome. I that is a, a big goal for I think a lot of people is that yeah. location independence. You can you know kind of work from anywhere, make your own schedule. Uh, but along with that, uh, making your own schedule comes a lot of responsibility too. Yeah, but is it? It's yeah, worth it to just be your own person to help other people to have a a, a really. Um, a comfortable lifestyle because you, you know, one of the things in my, uh, I, uh, when I was first starting in sales, I was the world's worst salesman. I hated sales. I found it very, a lot of rejection, a lot of humiliation, and that all led to depression. When people hang up on you on the phone or, or lie to you or manipulate you, how do we feel? Terrible. Terrible. It's horrible. And that's the way I felt in sales. I, you know, I call the phone a cactus. Who wants to touch a cactus? you know yeah and but it's something anybody can learn i'm the shy guy who sat in the back of the room wouldn't raise his hand couldn't make eye can a contact and i learned and sales just opened up the floodgates for me it made me popeye i am what i am and it allowed me to be independent and, and i just love sales and i don't think I'm, most people in real estate and other uh, professions don't talk about how wonderful this is uh, to be in sales. Uh, it's just, to me, it, it was, it's, I'm doing exactly what I should be doing in life. How many people can say that? Very few. That's, that's excellent. I hope everybody gets there.
Absolutely. So, uh, you know, I, I love talking about sales, I, but I think we take a lot of us take it for granted. Um, Guts is also about marketing. Uh, marketing has changed completely. We have a Guts marketing system. I get all my leads. Um, I don't spend any, guess how much money I spend for generating leads every day, quality leads every day. Guess how I'm much? Gonna, I'm going to go with zero to very little. Zero to very little. Once in a while, a, a Facebook boost for $25, $30. Most, I used to spend, I am my word of honor, over $10,000 a month in conventional marketing, uh, print marketing, advertising, and you know, different areas. Today, I spend nothing. I use social media. Okay. I do like what we're doing right now, a podcast. Mm -hmm. I'll do, um, uh, I do a live streaming on Periscope, Facebook Live, YouTube Live. I, I, um, I, do, I have over almost 700 videos on YouTube, Claude Diamond on YouTube. Anybody can find me. I give away, Taylor, more information, quality information, not schlocky commercials. Okay. <laughs> I, I, you know, to me, when you do, when you're giving away information and, and you've got banners and pop-ups and you're just constantly selling, uh, doing a, com a long commercial or infomercial, it's boring. I give people qual I give people better information for free than some of my competitors sell. Why? Because they stick around if you give them good information, yeah. right? Yeah, I attract more people. How many people woke up this morning and said, who's Claude Diamond? Who's Taylor Lott? Who are these guys? I don't know them. I have no credibility. So what I have to do is give out quality, uh, contemporary uh, information on a consistent basis on social media, on Twitter, on Instagram, on Facebook. Every, I spend 30 to 60 minutes a day on social media try, trying to give people uh, different aspects of sales, marketing, uh, things that are uh, my life story. I like to, I like to be a storyteller, tell stories. Uh, I like to talk about the screw ups I did and the lessons I learned, the successes I've had, and I share that with people. You know the, the Cardassians. Well, who, whoever you know, look at what, the, you, whatever you feel about them. Are they a successful marketing company? Absolutely. Absolutely. Our president, without getting political, how did our president? How did a guy who was head of a, a real estate investor, a game show host, how did he become president against established um, the politicians? Uh, he had no political background. He, had, uh, no, he, he spent nowhere near the money. How did he become president? You can't take that away from him, whether you're against to love him or hate him. He's an excellent uh, influencer, excellent marketer. You know, listen to Scott Adams from Dilbert. He, uh, he really put it well. <laughs> I love Scott Adams. <laughs> well, Claude, we've only got a few minutes left here, and uh, we have a few questions that we ask all of our guests that our, uh, our listeners like to hear about. Uh, so we'll just go through those real quick. Uh, sure. First, what are your tips to get a business's sales or an individual's sales to seven figures and beyond, and why do you, you have those particular tips? Um, to get to seven figures, um, you've got to sell – You've got to love the product. You've got to pick a product or service that you have in great enthusiasm that you believe in. You know, people hate bullshit artists. They, they hate phonies. They want somebody who sells a quality product or service that they are enthusiastic about that they believe in. So that's number one. Sell, don't sell shit. Sell something. Excuse me for the bad language. Um, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I'll clean it up. I'm, I'm, it's the New York comes out when I get in. Yeah. I, sometimes I get emotional about sales myself, which is, by the way, the million dollar rule. People make, um, uh, people, uh, people sell emotions. People, you know, it's uh, immediately, people buy emotionally. They only justify it logically later on. And so you've got you've to learn the science of, uh, of persuasion you, you can't take sales and marketing for granted. Find yourself, number one takeaway, doesn't have to be me, ladies and gentlemen, but it's okay, Google Claude Diamond and find out what I do and how I had a mentor, but find yourself a mentor. That's the shortcut to success. You can go out there, you can read a lot of stuff, and you can, you can make mistakes and recover from them, but it'll take a lot longer. Find someone who can shorten the learning curve. And, and, and this is the way, this is the basics of a be, get a product or service you're enthusiastic about, study the art and science of persuasion, focus on it intensely, practice it every day, and find yourself also a mentor. All right. Love the product. Yeah. 
get yourself a great mentor and study the science of persuasion. Yeah. All right, great. And uh, what is a sales technique or strategy that you used to use that you've eliminated? Something that, that you tried and it failed, it didn't work for you, so you, you got it out of there. You threw a lot it of the old fat, good question. A lot of the old school men, uh, gurus and sales trainers and everything, um, they say, knock on 100 doors. And if 100 people say no, knock on oh, another yeah. 100 and walk into the sunshine. And most sales trainers uh, are what we call motivational speakers. They give, you, uh, they give you the motivation, but not the perspiration. Uh, what is, they, you need a system so you know what to do and how to do it. We need to work smart. I tell my students, never go to a meeting. Never meet with a prospect unless you're picking up a check or a, pro, a, check or a contract. Why do some people make all the money in the world and other people struggle? Millionaires work smarter, okay? Mm -hmm. So don't, so forget about the old school a numbers game that everybody says, put the numbers in your favor, become the Vegas casino, put the algorithms, the science, the art in your favor so that you go to the bank. You can become a millionaire in sales if you, if you take the time and trouble to learn, learn this art and science of persuasion. Stay away from the old school. My, my good departed friend, uh, Zig Ziglar, used to say, give everybody, a, you know, give, every, uh, give the prospect everything they need and then they'll give it back to you. I think I disagree with that, okay? I, I, I used to give and give and give and then they said, and then they'd give it to somebody else. <laughs> yeah. in the order. And, and I found out that we have to put the salesman comes first in the gut sales method which is uh, some of the things I say, no presentation, no begging, um, and you know, uh, no scripts, and putting yourself first. These, these are new contemporary uh, philosophies in, in persuasion. Awesome. So uh, how can our listeners get in touch with you? I know you mentioned your YouTube channel. It sounds like you stream and you post things somewhere else. Yeah. You have the most intelligent audience in the world. I don't have to give phone numbers and things like that. All I have to do is Google Claude Diamond. All right. and, and they will find me there. My webpage, if they go to my webpage, I have a free book. Um, I do free training sessions with people. They can schedule at ClaudeDiamond.com. I often say on every video, call me. I answer my own phone, 970-281-5151. Um, I believe in accountability. Um, I, I have a wonderful life thanks to my, wonder, uh, my great clients. Um, who have allowed me to be part of their life and train them. I'm so grateful. I'm humbled by uh, the wonderful people out there who love the gut sales method. So um, uh, thank you for this interview. This was a lot of fun. I'm sorry we didn't have anything to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you, Claude. Thanks for your time and uh, have a wonderful day. Thanks for all you this. Too. Thank you. Great interview. All right. Take care. That was fun. Yeah, it was. I'm, I'm learning. I need to, uh, I'm learning right now. There's actually a time limit on this uh, meeting software. So I need to. Oh no. Unlimited time. Yeah. I mean, otherwise I could have kept talking to you for the next. Oh yeah. I've done uh, God, I think with Jamie Tardy or we went an hour and a half or something. And then she did, to, then she did a second hour with me. <laughs> follow up, uh, Cause I, I, I think that sales is truly the million dollar skill, but nobody talks about it. Uh, most people are always worried about the subject matter.